Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to CrossFit Central 101. My name is Chris, and today I'm going to be taking a look at KJ Hamler with you guys. He is a third year sophomore who officially declared early from Penn State University. Uh, so, the Detroit area native from not too far from where I am at right now. Uh, moved to Tampa, area late as a prep. A uh, four-star recruit, journalism major, pretty cool, redshirt, all that cool stuff. Uh, and, for, uh, yeah, he is very exciting to watch live. I will say that much. I watched quite a few Penn State games over the last couple of years as a Big Ten guy. And he has definitely been someone who has really stood out to me uh, in live games. So I'm really excited to finally get around to watching his tape and seeing if he shows the same things on tape that I remember seeing him do live. So, a uh, third-year sophomore from Penn State, he's listed unofficially at 5'9", 168, so size is definitely something to keep an eye out for. Uh, I'm sure he'll stand out for a being a smaller dude. However, he's very, very young. He's only 20 and a half years old, so he <laughs> definitely has uh, some still potential to develop and grow and, and things of that nature. Could also be a little bit... Taller than that as well. He has that 5'10, 5'11 mark. That's obviously better than 5'9. Uh, so, I mean, if those numbers are a little bit off, he definitely has a little bit of uh, a room to continue to grow over time. So, with that being said, I have a couple of games to watch with you guys today. We're going to take a look at Minnesota and Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh, of course, is the actual rival of Penn State. So, Kind of excited to see how he does in this game in Minnesota, of course, one of the better uh, teams this year in the Big Ten Conference. So, uh, we're going to start off with the pick game, and he will be number one, I think. Yep, number one. Oh, nice little block. Okay, like to see that. Okay, nice patience with the route. Nice quick cut. Definitely expect to see that a lot today. You get a great cut. Very nicely done. And, oh, that was beautiful sell. Very nicely done here. Bam, just takes this, and boom! Nice quick outside move to create that separation. Excellent job. Nice job finding that soft spot in the zone. Sliding through to avoid that coverage. Nice quick cut. Already a fan of his route running, which is not surprising. I kind of expected that to coming in. Oh. Okay, nice activity level in the block. Not a very strong guy, but at least he's willing in effort to do that job, which is good and help free up that running back for. Or actually say ball carrier for a really nice game there. So definitely a fan of that. Yikes. Good motor. Oh, want to see him make the tackle though. But oh well. Can't win him all. He's a receiver. I can't really blame him too much, I guess. Oh wow. Again. Just ex Oh, and then you get to see the athletic ability here. Oh, yes. Okay, this, this is what I came here for. This is why I'm watching him. Uh, first off, I like this ability to utilize the hands. Uh, uh, well, actually, before we even get to that point, first phase of the play is his ability to just spin cycle this defender and create a whole lot of separation. And then you get to see the athletic ability shine. These guys miss, finds open space really nicely. All that good stuff. So, running after the catch is definitely not an issue.
Oh, that was a nice little stunner release. Oh, that was a nice little route concept. Okay. Very interesting design. I wonder if that was intended for him to draw that double. Okay, nice little underneath there. Route, good catch. Love his feel for space there. Good timing. Separating those two defenders. Again, love the willingness and the effort in blocking, which is great, especially for a guy his size. And, of course, needed for someone who's going to play in the slot. Especially for us flying fans who are watching this. Okay. Uh, no idea how he managed to catch that, but he did get to see the hand splash here, which is great. Oh, that was a nice release move. I really like how he, bam, just undercuts that defender inside. Bam, nice clean jump, and then boom, switches him outside in. Very nice. Nice cut. We'd like to see a little bit more hand usage, but part of that I, I expect is probably a size thing. And the fact that they're not really pressing him. I like the idea. I actually really like what he does on this ball. Well, actually, I like the entire play. We'll start with that. First off, I really like this route. Does a great job of being off the line. Right here. Bam. Gets the inside leverage. Gets him turned out inside. And bam. Sells the outside cut really, really well. And then I like the idea he was going to go for here with the block. He's trying to cut that guy off. Unfortunately, it didn't work because he already had the angle. But uh, very nice idea, which is what I'm really looking for first here. I like how he finds the space. It's a pretty tight concept coming out of a tight formation too, which is part of the thing. But he does a great job of finding that open space here despite that. And if that's a better place to throw, that's an easy completion. So, really nicely done there by KJ. Again, great concept, really nicely executed. Nice athletic ability, you get to see that burst. Two guys seem to spot. Unfortunately. Okay, stay engaged. Very well done. Nice. And another thing too, 
is I actually like how he utilizes his hands in this block, right? He does a great job of keeping this defender at length. And bam, staying engaged with the hands and the shoulder pads. That's actually really good technique for a receiver too. Which is probably why he's able to do so well in his blocking so far. Is because he's utilizing that hand placement, that technique, to get his hands on the shoulder pads. It's actually really, really nice to see. Nice inside release move. Results in that inside separation. Overthrown, but has some room. That's a good play for him. Nice outside release. Another thing that I like so far about KJ is we're seeing him active at all three levels of the field. We're seeing him effective in that short range, that inside five, that, well, I don't even necessarily want to say inside, that around that five, maybe ten yard range. We're seeing him effective in that intermediate range, that 10, 15, 20, even 25 yard range. And we're seeing him uh, stretch the field as well using his athletic ability and hit those vertical stumps. So... Really, really pleased with that aspect of his game as well, which is, again, very nice to see specifically from a guy who's going to be playing mostly, if not exclusively, out of the slot positioning at the NFL level. Overall, really nice first game for KJ Hamler. Uh, definitely a lot of things to like about that so far. Definitely shown some very positive signs, uh, specifically in terms of his ability to hit all three levels of the field. Uh, hasn't had any hands issues or anything like that yet. Um, actually been doing a pretty decent job with the hands catching. Uh, one thing I haven't really seen a whole lot so far is contested again. Not really expecting to see that too much, given his style of receiver. Uh, also, same thing with the hand usage. Given that he is a quick, elusive, uh, agile, small, route-running slot, don't really expect to see too, too much in terms of physicality, hand usage, hand running, all that type of thing. But I will say, he has done really, really impressive jobs so far with the blocking ability. So hopefully that can keep up in this game as well. Uh, but definitely excited to see what he can do against the Minnesota Golden Gophers, who are maybe a little bit better uh, defensively than Pitt was. Nice round cut. He's definitely done a great job with his route running ability, too. I didn't really talk about that in that last little segment. Nice feel for space, again, I like how he has, he has a nice shot here slipping around that defender, avoiding that, that contact. Nicely done. Okay, delayed route, which is interesting. That was most likely on purpose. Interesting. We'd like to see him get a little bit more shallow on that. Not a huge deal, but... Nice, that should be a touchdown. I like the idea. He didn't really execute this all that well, which is not ideal, ideal. But I really like how he takes out, he attempts to take out 14 first. And actually, you know what, now that I rewatched this play, that was actually a really good play by him. Knowing that the uh, backside blocker is actually going to be able to take out 14. So, in all honesty, that was actually a very good play on his part to see this blocker come across. Know that that was going to happen, even before I did. Uh, and then attempt to get to that next blocker, who he didn't have to block. So yeah, overall, a very nicely done, highly executed play. 
And then he takes out the guy that he can actually get to here. He's not going to be able to catch up to number 11. So he takes out the second blocker on this play, or the second defender on this play in 23. That is a very, very high football IQ play. Uh, and really well executed blocking play there by KJ Himmler. I love to see that. That was incomplete. Oh, oh okay. A double caught, but I really like the first phase of this play. He does a really nice job of winning at the line with that nice quick release move. Well, actually that wasn't even really a move, just a nice quick get off. And then a real nice cut here to time this really, really well to maximize that separation. Talk about that in all these receiver videos. When I see him, these receivers time these cuts to maximize that separation between these defenders in that gap, he does that really well. As a result, gives him plenty of space to make this play. Oh, okay. Actually, to be fair, that ball was behind him. So, and he does get the hands, right? I always talk about those hands catches. He does get those hands on it still. Because of that, he's able to make this play. So, again, that's probably the second or third play now where I've actually kind of hindered him when I shouldn't have. That was actually a good play on his part to come up with that catch when it wasn't the best throw. That, again, another play you could kind of ping on him, given that it's a contested catch. And, honestly, that I don't expect him to come up with that play. That was not going to happen. Nice quick outside move. Nice! Good transition and blocking. Again, he's a smaller guy, so he's not going to be able to kind of win that physical battle in terms of strength. But he does a really nice job of controlling that defender and limiting his ability to get to the, the ball carrier. That was really, really nicely done. I'm a huge fan of his blocking effort so far. That was a very odd concept, but okay then. Jet motion. Can be expecting him to do a lot of that at the NFL level. Yeah, nice feel for space. Funny that we were just talking about West Virginia in the Tua Tango by Lowell video, but he almost kind of reminds me of a Tavon Austin type. And again, much like the Tua video where I compared him to Pat White, I think that KJ Himmler has a lot more upside to be a solid pro. This is not a college KJ Himmler to pro Tavon Austin comparison. This is where I think of them as prospects in their style of play. Uh, and their potential abilities and, and things of that nature. But uh, I think that he has that kind of same similar mindset where he's he's going to be small. He's going to come in undersized, especially compared to some of the other bigger receivers in this class. And even more so compared to the lengthier corners in this class. But he has that ability to make plays with his athleticism. Get him into space and he will make a play for you. Uh, get him the ball in open space, and yeah, he is going to make a play after the catch. He has the athletic ability. He has great route running ability for one, which has been really nice to see as well. A little bit more so than Tavon did uh, coming out from what I remember. But another one of those guys where he is an elite athlete, uh, and he's hopefully going to show it in Indy. Honestly, that's just really a ball tracking and a little bit of a contested catch, right? I was just talking about how that might be one of the weaker aspects of his game, but he does a nice job of coming down with that ball in traffic. That's really nice ball tracking. Nice! Okay, not a fan of this decision. They should not have thrown the ball to him in this particular case, but regardless of that, I love what he did on this play, and that's why the quarterback threw him the football. He does a really nice job here on this route. Bam, selling this starter step. Boom, nice outside release. 
and creates that separation, maximizes that. If this ball is a little bit more out in front and allows KJ to keep running toward the boundary area, then that might be a touchdown. But the fact that that ball is so underthrown does not help. He had no chance at that. He did beyond what should be expected him in that particular instance, to be completely honest with you. But this was a very well-executed start by KJ. It's just unfortunately not a good throw. Uh, if that ball is placed outside in this area of the field toward the numbers, where he doesn't have to stop and turn, that could have been at most a touchdown. But well done to KJ. Terrible result, but he did a great job given what... Uh, what could have happened at the best in that situation. Yeah, and you you really get to see it from this angle, right? Right here, he starts to s slow down a little bit, turn, and he almost stops at this point in the play when he gets to that, that number 10, that zero. If he's able to keep running, almost like more of a fade concept here, and kind of bend this a little bit more outside, away from that zone defender, bam, that could have been a touchdown. That's obviously a great play by Hamler. He's doing a lot better than I thought, to be honest. I thought he'd be a little bit more of your weaker type of guy. He's not that. Overthrown. I will say I would like a little bit more versatility in terms of... Oh. Okay, excellent cut. Uh, in terms of out, being able to play outside, but I he literally broke that guy's ankle. Holy crap. <laughs> okay. Uh, and part of that is con the contested catch thing. You know what? A better cop, if you guys want more of a, a pro to pro cop, he reminds me of a Golden Tate in some ways, too. Golden Tate, of course, out of Notre Dame. Probably similar dress. Oh my god. Uh, probably similar in terms of draft stock as well when you go in that second round range. But uh, very elite route runners, as you guys are, just saw in this play. I'm going to show you guys when I'm done with this little ramble. Uh, excellent ability to make people miss in space. Has the, athletic, the requisite athletic ability. And to be honest with you, despite the small size, I think he could honestly play some outside. He may not be the best at that. Especially if he's going to be going to a place like Detroit where you already have Marvin Jones and Kenny Galladay as your two outside receivers. But he is an elite number three option if that's what you're planning on him for. Uh, and he could definitely be a number two option uh, in a very good offense. Another guy in that kind of mold, a Tyreek Hill or a Sammy Watkins. I mean, there's so many different kinds of, of receivers who who play his style and make it work at the NFL level. Like some of these guys are a little bit bigger. I think Golden Tate was like 5'10". Uh, but I, again, it's more about the stylistic of play uh, and what they're able to do on the football field to me. And he can do so many different things uh, that he will make it work in the NFL level. And you'll get to see this on this play. Just bam! Oh my goodness, that cut. Uh, that is... One of the best drops I've seen on tape this year. And then you get to see a little bit of that nice burst, too. You get to see that nice, quick first step off the line. Boom! Just, oh, that transition from motion, too. Excellent quick first step. Bam! And then that nice, quick lateral agility. Change the direction. Excellent. And then once he gets the ball in his hand, it's just the, the, the speed turns in and you get that second gear. That is really, really nicely done. That's a great play. I mean, he had to be doing something wrong as an offense to, for him to not work out at the NFL level. I mean, if you're trying to force him outside and, and utilize his physicality or something, like, if you use him as a route runner, as a separation guy, I don't see any world in which he busts. Just being honest. <laughs> like, it would be a shock if he did not pin out at the NFL level. And it would likely be some sort of injury reason or something like that that prevented him from doing so.
because in terms of physical tools, he has the technical as most of the technical aspects. He has almost all the physical aspects. I mean, he's kind of just like that one little bit short in both areas, but uh, literally two. But uh, I mean, honestly, he has so much to his game that I am not at all concerned about his ability to translate to the NFL game. I normally watch three games of tape on these guys, but man, it is real easy to see what type of player he could be at the NFL level from day one. And you take this guy as a second round pick, and he will be a starting receiver in your 11 personnel sets. Unless you're literally the Kansas City Chiefs, in which case I don't know why the Chiefs would take him in the second round. Nice vertical stem. Boom. And his change of gear, I mean, we always talk about the like, change of direction, lateral, lateral agility and quickness and everything. But his ability to get from just that nice little slow motion to bam, to that stutter, to bam, you get to see, the, well, not necessarily on this particular play, but then you get to see that nice burst. Oh, wow, another contested catch. So even the contested catching, uh, that wasn't completely contested. He didn't have his arm under in, in, between the, in between the hands and the body, but that was still a tight window catch, considering uh, he didn't really have a shot coming down with the football. He's not your jump ball contested catch guy, but he can make a catch in space, uh, which is really nice to see. I expected to come out of this with the first round grade on him. I was not expecting him to be one of my top five receivers. Like I think he will be at the end of the video. Another tight window catch. Nice route. Oh, he dropped he dropped it. Not KJ, but that was a really nicely designed concept. Nice. Should be a first. Post. Okay, that works too. Clear out. That was it. Honestly, I am not a fan of that play. Out of that particular formation. That was nice. Good job using the hands to create that separation. Something that he hasn't really done too, too much is probably going to be my biggest thing I give on him. It's a really nice job right there of, of utilizing the arm length to create the separation. And again, I, we get to see, right? This is another thing I, I was going to be looking for at the end of the video, is the zone awareness and finding those soft spots. He does a great job on this play of just sitting here in that soft spot in that zone. That's really nicely done. He's showing us that ability as well. That's great to see. He's also done a great job of winning that coverage, too, so that's going to be another high mark for him. Same thing, right? You get to see that flow in between those defenders, right? He starts out on this defender's outside shoulder and just, bam, goes around him in that inside lane and then avoids the other guy on the interior. That's really, really nicely done. And then ends up with the football down the field. Look at the separation. Bam. Nice hands catch as well before bringing in the body. Given the ball placement on that catch, I don't really blame him for that either. Nice quick cut. Showing the ability to utilize round, soft, and hard quick cuts. Nice quick cut again. Great move. Okay, really random play on third and middle. 
Oh, that was a nice release move. Great coverage. But yeah, he definitely does a nice job with that. That sell. That was honestly a fantastic play by the defender. It's like great coverage, but man. Nice, good cut. I'm gonna end up with a, probably a higher grade on him than Shugi. I'm not even gonna lie. Nice feel for space. You just have slipping in between those two defenders. Oh, that was excellent. Great coverage, which is preventing him from making this play. But I love how he kind of just sells this, okay, la di da type run block on boundary, yada yada. But then, bam, he pulls it, and then it explodes into that fade route. That was the Excellent sell. Great coverage. That was really, really well done by the defender, Benjamin St. Juice, former Michigan player, by the way. Uh, he actually does a great job turning his head, too. If that was not almost perfect coverage, that play would have been a touchdown. Easy. KJ did everything right on that play. Uh, that was just incredibly perfect. Literally, literally perfect coverage. You cannot cover that play any better than St. Juice did. <laughs> oh, that was beautiful feel for space. Great coverage of Warden's. Nice quick cut. Just have avoiding that contact. That was a great fade route again. Oh, okay, so actually, on KJ's part, this is a great play, because watch what he does here. He looks like he's getting, supposed to keep going downfield here, but he does a really nice shot with this cut to generate that separation point right here. So actually, on KJ's part, he did his job here. That's a really nice job of, of separating from that backside defender. And if he did again, like we talked about in the last game, on that fade, that... Nice vertical stem. If he doesn't have to stop and turn around for this football, that's an easy touchdown. He has plenty of space in this E area. Oh, that's a terrible throw. Darn. And look how far behind him that is. That is horrid. Oh my god, that easily should have been a touchdown too. That's a terrible way to end this. Well, I shouldn't say terrible. That's a very disappointing way to end this. But a very good way for KJ because he did his job well. So, overall, very, very pleased. And you guys will see that when you guys see how he compares to the other receivers in this class for me. I really, really love what I saw in film from him today. Uh, definitely very happy with him in several areas. Of, of what I wanted to see. So biggest strength is his route running. 
uh, definitely a fan of what we got to see from him there. Uh, we got to see him versus, whoops. Uh, biggest weakness is just simply going to be size. Uh, the games we got to watch today were Minnesota 19 and Pittsburgh 19. Hanson contested catching. I am going to give him a 9. We got to see his ability to come down with contested catches, and we got to see his hands. So I am very pleased. No drops, no issues like that. Uh, one, there was poor ball placement. He struggled a little bit finishing the process, but hopefully his quarterback at the NFL level will do a better job with that. Athletic ability, 10. Uh, definitely elite athlete for sure. Great change of direction, great lateral agility, all that good stuff. Route running is a 10 as well. Excellent, excellent cuts. Ability to make almost a full route straight, I'm sure. Uh, if you ask him to run a route, he'll be able to, especially when you teach him that route. Uh, not due to lack of route running ability, more so due to tree. And even then, I think he ran a diversity of route straight at a 10. We're going to have to catch again another 10, just elite in that area, able to make guys miss in space, able to extend placement on the catch point. Used like utilizes athleticism while I have to catch all that good stuff. At least move is going to be a nine only because I want to see more hand usage. Really want to see that extra little bit of hand usage. As you guys can tell, I watched a lot of receivers this year. Nobody has gotten ten for me yet because I really just want to see that extra bit of hand usage, like we got to see from Deontay Johnson last year. That's my goal for a ten. If someone can repeat what Deontay Johnson did at Toledo last year. They can get a ton in that category for me. So far, no one's been able to do that. So I'm wearing this as a 9. Excellent job with that. Great job of winning the coverage, etc. All that good stuff. And all, all honesty, that could probably be a 10. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to give him a 10. Motor and blocking. Again, 9. Only because he doesn't have the physicality and the size to be able to wipe guys out of place. I do think that there's going to be longer corners at the NFL level who are going to be able to go over the top of him. And be able to shed him a little bit easier. But in terms of effort, motor, blocking, all that stuff, it's a 10 out of 10. I just can't give him a 10, given that there's going to be ways to beat his blocking at the NFL level. Short threat is a 10. Intermediate threat, would like to see a little bit more. So I'm going to have to go with a 9 in terms of that intermediate 15 to 20 yard range. Deep threat is going to be a 10. So... Yeah, I mean, you guys can see where this is going already. Uh, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus, minus 4. That's a 96. He's like my fourth highest grade player in the class. You know what? <sighs> I can't do that. I need to bump him down to a 95. I'm going to bump that down to a 9. Because he can't win those contested catches, I'm going to go with a 9 there too. And then I'll get him to a 94. Uh, and then I'll put him behind CD Lamb, which I think is fair. But still, I mean, overall, I think you guys get the point. Um, very, very well rounded as a prospect. He does everything well. He just doesn't have the size. And that's going to hinder him in terms of jump balls and contested catching. That's going to hinder him in terms of deep threat ability, in terms of running those vertical stems. He has to win by creating that space and creating that separation. Uh, that's going to hinder him a little bit in terms of blocking. There's going to be ways able to ways around that. It's going to hinder him in terms of being able to separate in that zone uh, and, and finding those softer spots. And it's going to hinder him in terms of his release moves because he's not going to be able to utilize those hands and physicality to get that push off the release move uh, that you want to see with the hands. So basically, all of his negatives for me are size related uh, in terms of both weight and height, more so height and length. But yeah, in all honesty, he is one of the best receiver prospects I've watched in a long, long time. And I think. Based on the hands, because the hands are the main reason why Judy's not in that 95 category, as you guys can see with the 5. Um, in all honesty, he's going to be a elite pro player. Uh, I would not hesitate to take him in the bottom half of the first round. I'm not necessarily going to take him in the like top 10 like I would a CD Lamb. But... Um, yeah, he he checks all of my boxes 
for what I want to see in receiver prospect is, I guess, the best way to phrase that for me. So, absolutely deserving of a blue grade. And I am a huge fan of his. Definitely going to be seeing him throughout the rest of the draft process. And hopefully this video show you guys everything that I like about him and why. So, with that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one, learned a thing or two. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this over the course of the next coming days, weeks, and months as we continue throughout the draft process. Uh, going to be going back to Senior Bowl videos as I send the two a video. Uh, over the course of the next coming days as we see the defensive teams coming out as well when Jim Yankee posts those on his Twitter page. But for now, hope you guys had as much fun as I did with this one. Uh, definitely very exciting watch for me. Got to see him do almost everything I wanted to see from a receiver prospect this year. Uh, and yeah, I am a, a huge fan of his uh, going forward. So for now... Hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and peace out.